this video, we're going to take a look at how the base material node works. Here in our library, under the PBR utilities, you can find the base material node. So let's make an instance. Let's left click, drag and drop, and place this node here into our graph. And so what I'm going to do just right off the bat is take this node and just hook this into my output connections. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to view these outputs in the 3D view. So here we can see our material on an actual model. Now if we select the node itself and we take a look at its attributes, you can see that under the instance parameters, the first thing we have is our PBR workflow. We have a drop down where we can choose between metal rough or specular glossiness. Now in my case, I have my graph set up to work with the metal rough. So here we have base color, normal, rough, and this is our metallic output. So I have my PBR workflow set to metal rough. Let's zoom in on this node. I'm going to hit the one key on the keyboard to expand the channels. And here you can see that I do have base color, normal, roughness, metallic, and then I have my additional ambient occlusion and height. Now if I were to take this metal rough workflow and switch this to specular glossiness, you can see that I now have new additional channels I could work with. So this is diffuse, uh, here we have our spec, and then finally here we have our glossiness. So let's go back to our metal rough. Now, depending on what workflow you're using here in Designer, you're going to want to first set this PBR workflow on the base material node. So like I said, in our case, we're in Metal Rough. If we were uh, working here in Spec Gloss and we set this to Spec Gloss, we would only have the Spec Gloss channels. So now I'll hit 3 on the keyboard just to um, compact my channels together, and you can see that we are outputting these values here. So I have a model. This is going to be like a real world example. So with this base material that I'm working with, I could then go through and configure this base material to be either a metal or a dielectric. So first off, I have an actual mesh and I have a normal map bake from this and I want to use this normal map. So I'm going to come over here to my user defined maps and I'm going to enable my normal. So by default, all of the user defined maps are false. So I'm going to enable this to true. What this does is it gives me a new input here to my base material node, which is a normal. And like I said, I already have this normal map. So let me just go over to uh, my resources and take this map. Let me just instance this map here into my graph. Now I'm just going to make this connection to the output. When I do this, you can see that the base material node is now passing this normal here through to the actual normal output. So now on this mesh, we actually have our normal. So let's go back to the base material node. Let's close up our user defined maps and let's start to focus on our next item here, which is the material preset. So by default, this is set to custom. This means that I have a base color option and I have a metallic option. Now, by default, like I said, it is custom, uh, which has the metal set all the way to white, which is a pure raw metal, and we have our base color set at a metal reflectance value, which is going to give us this metal material. And so you can see that we can set this uh, to be custom if we want to change our base color value uh, to be a different metal reflectance value, or if we want to take this from being a metal uh, and then switch this all the way to black and make this a dielectric, we can do that as well. So this is just a custom setting. However, if I click this drop down, I have a lot of different material options. Notice that we actually have a dielectric option. We'll cover that in just a bit. But we also have all of these other metal values. So for instance, if I wanted to switch this to copper, you now see that we have this copper material has been created for us. Let's use this as an example. So now we're going to come over to our roughness glossiness roll down. So here I'll click this to expose the values. Like I said, we are working in the metal rough. So the values that we're working with here are the roughness values. So if I take this roughness slider and I move this all the way up here and make this very, very rough, you can see that I can make this, uh, this metal material very rough. Or I could drop this value all the way down to black and make this metal very, very shiny, as you see here. Now, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to set a roughness value, uh, probably around this range here. Now I have some options to work with grunge. So let's say that I want to add some grunge to this. So I can just increase my grunge amount. And here you can see that we actually start to have some grunge value. If we take a look at the output of the roughness, you can see that this is the new grunge map that's added for us. So let's go back here to our base material. Uh, let's increase this grunge mount a little bit more here. And then what I'll do is I'll also cre increase the overall base roughness value. And so here you can see that we're starting to get uh, this roughness over the entire surface. 
Now, what's really powerful about this is that we could use our own custom grunge map as well. So let's do that. Let's come over to our custom grunge input, and we're going to set this to true. Now, if we zoom in on the node here, you can see that we now have a new input, which is our optional grunge. So let's come over to our library, and I'm just going to do a search for grunge. And we have some grunge maps here. Let me just find one of these guys, uh, something that we can work with. Uh, let's try this one here. And so I'm just going to uh, bring this grunge map here into my graph and then I'm going to make this connection. And so when I do this, you can see that this grunge map is now, this custom grunge map is now taking effect. So let's go back to this base material and I can drop down the grunge amount. You can see where the grunge map itself is now being affected by this grunge amount setting. And so as we kind of just move over our uh, actual mesh here, you can kind of see uh, what this grunge map is doing. So here, let's just drop our roughness value down. And so uh, we'll add this grunge effect. Uh, here, I think I might actually just increase the grunge mount just a little bit like this. And so now we're just kind of modulating uh, this grunge map. But we're using a custom map instead of the stock grunge map that uh, ships with the base material node. So with this, you can see that you know we're working on just a raw metal. We can easily change this. So we can go from copper to, let's say, titanium. So now we have a different metal. Uh, it's just uh, the base material node is just a really quick way uh, to generate you know, different types of uh, material presets. And like I said, at this point, uh, we've been working with raw metal. Now, before we move uh, to uh, the dielectric preset, uh, let me talk about another way that I use this base material node. So like I said, I have these other maps here uh, that I've imported. So these are uh, like a base material that I started uh, inside of Substance Painter. And so what I'll do often is if I have, you know, some maps that are coming from another application, uh, or in my case, if I've been using Substance Painter to quickly kind of mock up my base material, uh, I'll then export those maps, bring those here into Substance uh, Designer, uh, and then I'll use the base material node uh, to compile these maps into a single material. So let me show you how that works. So I have the node. I'm just going to come over here to uh, my user-defined maps. And then I'm just going to enable the channels that I want to work with. So in my case, I'm going to enable my base color, uh, my roughness, and my metallic. And so let's start to hook these guys up. Let's go back to our uh, grunge map here. And I'm just going to remove this map for now. And then what I would do is just take my map. So for instance, here's our metallic. Uh, let's just take this guy here and uh, hook him up. So here's metallic. And here's our base color. Let's bring this guy in, and we're just going to hook him in here. And then finally, we just need our roughness map. So let's bring our roughness in, and we'll hook the roughness in. So now that we have this in place uh, here in our 3D view, since we've been outputting, uh, well, since we've been placing these outputs to the 3D view, uh, you can see that I now have this base material uh, all ready for me. Uh, these maps, uh, again, that uh, have come from a different application, such as Substance Painter, are now compiled down to, so we have these four channels, are now compiled down to this single material for me. So my base material in this sense is not derived from the values themselves, uh, but from the custom inputs that are being fed to it. So now that we have this base material, I would then go through the process of maybe layering this base material using the multi-material blend or further augmenting with some generators using the material color blend node. But again, the core point here is that we've used the base material uh, to create a core material based off some separate input bitmaps here. So now let's uh, look at an example where we're going to use the base material node uh, to create a dielectric material and a raw metal and then combine them together. So let's go back to our PBR utilities and let's grab our base material and let's grab another instance of it. So uh, one will be our dielectric and one will then be our raw metal. Let's start with the raw metal first. So PBR workflow, we're going to be metal rough and let's uh, select titanium for this. And so we have this set. Uh, what I can do at, at this point is I'll just right click this node and I'll view these outputs or I'll view this in 3D view. Uh, so we can quickly uh, take a look at what this is going to look like on the model. Uh, let's come over here to our roughness and uh, let's uh, increase our roughness value and let's just use kind of a, a stock kind of grunge map to this guy for right now. And so let's just say that uh, this is pretty good at this point. Now, this is a model where I actually do have this baked normal map. So what I would probably do in this case is come over to my user defined maps, uh, select my normal here. Uh, let's grab our normal map and let's just instance this here into the graph and let's make this connection. So now you can see that we have our normal passing through. 
Okay, so now let's do the same thing for our next material. This is our metal, let's do our dielectric. So in this case, I'm going to go to my material preset and I'm going to change this to dielectric. And so right off the bat, since we're using this metal rough workflow, we have a base color. Now as we covered in the PBR guide, uh, the metal rough does not have direct control over the specular value for these dielectric materials. The default, as basically hard-coded in the shader, is going to be at this 4% reflective value. Now as we also discussed in the guide, we can override this by using the specular level channel. Now the base material note at the recording of this tutorial doesn't have uh, a pass-through for the specular level that's actually going to be added. So here when you select dielectric, you'll have base color and then you'll also have a value for being able to uh, adjust that specular level channel. But for now, we're just going to go with the default, which is going to be that 4% reflective. So let me just pick my color. So I'm going to come over to my color editor and I'm just going to pick a value. Uh, again, remember, uh, based off the PBR guide, uh, we don't want to pick a very, very dark value. We do want to keep this albedo or this reflected color value within our specific brightness ranges. So in my case, I'm just going to pick a value uh, around this range here. Again, just kind of keeping my eye on uh, what this uh, value is going to be here for my red. So in my case, I don't want this to really fall below probably 50. So I'm just going to take this guy, move it up, and I might just increase the value just a bit. So let me just make this uh, a bit more red, and then I'm going to uh, just decrease my value. Again, I'm just taking a look at my red value here. So I can kind of drop this guy down. Uh, maybe around 75 will be pretty good. So now I have my base color value. Let's right-click this node and say View in 3D View so we can take a look at what this uh, dielectric um, level is going to be for us. Now again, we have this normal map. So let's select this node, let's go to our user-defined maps, and let's enable our normal, and then let's just grab our normal again and plug this guy in. So now we have our normal for our base uh, material, uh, in which case uh, we're talking about our dielectric. So let's uh, just kind of zoom in on this guy, and let's just do, again, just some um, base values here for our roughness. So here for my roughness, I'm just going to increase this uh, quite a bit here. So we'll get something like maybe this. And again, uh, let's just uh, feed in some uh, grunge to this. So here we'll just uh, pull our grunge value up. And again, I think what I'll do in this point, or in this case, is probably just, uh, just utilize uh, just kind of that default grunge map for this guy. Uh, let's just decrease this uh, here. Now nah, nah, let's just keep it a little bit higher here. Okay, so we'll work with something like this. So now we have our, uh, our dielectric, and then here we have our base. So now let's just blend these guys together. So to do this, we could come over to our material filters, our blending, and let's go to our uh, multi-material blend. So I'm just going to uh, make an instance of this here into my graph. Now, material one is going to be our base level. And again, I want this to be uh, you know, the base level here for our raw metal because this is going to be like a painted dielectric layer on top. Uh, so we'll go ahead and plug this into uh, material input one. And then let's take our dielectric and place this into material input two. Now, uh, while we're doing this here, uh, let me just go ahead and take my output from my um, multi-material blend and just go ahead and connect this to all of my outputs. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to view my outputs in the 3D view. Now, we don't really see where these guys are being blended yet because we need to feed in our ID map. Now, I have an ID map that was baked for this guy, so let me just grab this node here or this texture and let me just drag and drop and place this guy here into the graph. And then we're going to feed this into our color ID. Let's select the node, let's go to our Material 2, and well, first here we'll double click this guy to bring this here into our uh, 2D view. Let's go back and select our multi-material node, and here let's go to our color, so we'll pick our color, and let's use the picker, and I'm going to place uh, this dielectric layer everywhere uh, where red is found in this ID map. So we'll do this here, and now you can see that we're masking this material. So here we'll just kind of zoom out here into our 3D view, and you can see that in this case, we've used the base material node uh, to kind of start us here, again, with this base material. We have our dielectric, here we have our metal, and then we're just blending these two materials based on this ID map that was baked using Substance Designer. So again, these base material nodes can act as a container, as we showed earlier, where we can take input maps, feed those in, uh, and then basically compile those maps down to a single material, or we can use it, uh, as we've done here, where we're just feeding in uh, some baked information, such as our normal. We're feeding that into uh, these two materials. 
we're just changing our presets here. So here for this one, we were using a titanium. Uh, for this guy here, we set this to dielectric. We've set the reflected color. And on both nodes, we've set some just default roughness with a little bit of grunge. Uh, again, we could use a custom grunge input to further augment these guys. And then finally, we're just passing these down here through uh, the chain here, blending them using this ID mask. So in our case, this node, as you can see, is a, a very quick utility for building up these base materials. So now I'm going to switch gears just a bit and talk about the base material from a specular gloss point of view. So here's our base material. Let's just instance this here into a graph. Now this new graph has been created uh, with specular gloss outputs. So here we have diffuse, normal, uh, specular, and glossiness. So let's select the node. Let's take our workflow into spec gloss and let's just connect our outputs. And here we are seeing this in our 3D view now. So if we take a look at the material presets, uh, by default, just as with Metal Rough, we're set to custom. This gives us a custom diffuse and a custom specular uh, control. Let's switch this from custom to dielectric. So now we have the ability to work with a dielectric material. For our diffuse reflected color, we could switch this to a value. So again, if we just pick that red. Now we have this specular presets value. I'm going to double click the specular map here to load this into the 2D view. Let's go back and single click on the base material node to load its parameters here into our view. And let's talk about these specular presets. So if we click this drop down, we have all of these different specular presets that we can choose from. We default to plastic because as we discussed in the guide, most of these values here are going to fall within the range of plastic. And with that, we have this specular range. So here, going back to the PBR guide, volume two in figure 48, this here, you can see that we have our common dielectrics range, where we're going from 2 to 5%. Now, the slider that we looked at is going to move between this range. Now, for the plastic, you can see that the plastic range is going to encompass this default 4%. So the range slider is going to move from this value to this value, which is going to be a range of about 55 to 63 in sRGB. So here, now back in Substance Designer, here's our specular range. And as we start to move this value, you can see that the specular is going to change. Now, now it's not going to change that much. Again, as we've kind of discussed here in the PBR guide, the actual reflectance value for dielectrics really doesn't uh, vary that great. But we have this control built into the base material node that allows us to really fine tune uh, that specular value. And again, you can see that this is being uh, placed here within our specular map. Now, if we change this from dielectric to say something like, uh, let's go to copper. And now you can see how the spec gloss system works. So since this is now a metal that we have set, our diffuse is completely black. And our metal reflectance value is now placed here within our specular map. Everything else works the same with this node under the spec gloss workflow. We have our glossiness value. So notice now the uh, control has changed from roughness to glossiness. Still have the same grunge and grunge tiling, as well as the ability to work with our user defined maps. However, our user defined maps have now changed to match those needed for the spec gloss workflow. So in our case, we have diffuse, spec, gloss, and then ambient occlusion, hide our common map types, as we discussed in the guide as well. So that is how the base material node works and again can be found within the PBR utilities in the Substance Designer library.